I guess more specifically, how'd you feel, you know, knowing that you're losing a teammate like Lindor? But I feel like even when you get a, a so-called superstar teammate like Lindor, you never get that feeling from him. You never get that vibe from him. He's he's really down to earth. You talk to talk to Jose Ramirez, and it's oh, he's going out there. He's having an MVP season, and he's still same old Jose. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, this is ninety nine miles per hour with Percy Garner, and we like to thank our sponsor, Your Pizza, the finest pizza anywhere. But if you don't like pizza, which everyone does, they got wings, sandwiches, subs, and of course salads. For those of you who like to be healthy, not like me. Uh, also, I would like to mention the network that allows me to have this podcast, and that is the Get Level Podcast Network. There's plenty of other podcasts, a lot of content to get through. And uh, also, go check out the website, getlevelpod.com. It'll be up some, somewhere around here. Uh, go there, check out all the websites. You can also listen. Uh, if you don't want to watch the whole thing, you can listen uh, audible without any interruptions. And then also, to the Rainbow Connection uh, I am the new executive director there, and we are having our telethon uh, that we have every year, and we're expecting big things, even though in these tough times, uh, we know the community can always come through. That is March 7th, and starting at 11 a.m. And then also, my, my scholarship fund, also trying to raise uh, money for a Dover student uh, in these hard times to, to get some help uh, for them to attend college. What's good, everybody? Uh, welcome to 99 Miles Per Hour with your host, me, Percy Garner. Uh, we got, I mean, I guess he's kind of special. Can we call him a special guest? <laughs> we, got, we, got, no, we got a special guest today. I ain't going to mess around. Uh, this dude is uh, someone that, you know, I've, I guess, enjoy watching grow up. Um, not much, but, you know, he came in 2015 with the Cleveland Indians. 42nd overall pick, I think, which is a little bit better than me. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but this dude is uh, is really special. If you guys got the opportunity to watch him pitch uh, last year, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, this dude is, you know, I'm hoping, I can't wait to watch him this year, whatever type of season we're going to have. Um, but I'm excited. I know you guys are excited. But to, uh, today we got Tristan McKenzie, uh, a.k.a. Dr. Sticks. <laughs> uh, how you doing, man? Thanks for joining us. Good, good. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, if you guys just, if you guys aren't like familiar, so I'm pretty sure every, every time I talked about you, Tristan, I would be like, uh, you know, they're like, hey, that 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 one kid they had pitched, man, because we're, we're dead. We're Cleveland fans all around here in this area. So, uh, you know, everybody's coming to me and they assume I know you. I'm assuming because you're black, but <laughs> they're just like, you know him, whatever. I'm like, yeah, you know, he was just a, a young whippersnapper when I was playing, but you know, now I'm at home and 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 you're doing big things. But uh, but let's just get into it, man. Like, so currently, you know, what you're what in Florida uh, preparing for this season? Do you know anything about what the season's about to be holding or what? <laughs> uh as far as I know, everything's going to be status quo. We're going to get out there. Spring training is going to run like normal. I mean, definitely like extra precautions with the with the whole COVID situation, but I'm expecting it to be very similar to what last year was like, maybe okay. even like a scaled up a little bit. Got you, got you. Okay. Um, now, the question I wanted, I guess I kind of gave it away already with the introduction, but um, is that your the players' weekend – I mean, I'm pretty sure you got something in tune because you, you kind of – we got a lot of similarities and a lot of tastes that we like. We into sneakers and stuff like that. So I'm assuming you're going to have something nice. Wait, what, what brand are you with right now, actually? Uh, I'm actually with Nike now. Ooh. You were with New Balance for the longest, right? I just switched. Nice, nice. Okay, that's what's up. So I'm pretty sure you're going to have some some heat coming out for the, the Players Weekend. I'm excited to see. And, yeah, I guess I gave it away. But just to make sure, I want, I'm sure – I'm. I guess I want to know what was going to be on your jersey uh, for the players' weekend since Lindor stole my nickname as Mister Smile. Smile. <laughs> but Smile. Uh, yeah, yours is going to be Doctor Six, right? It's it's either going to be Sticks or Doctor Stick. Probably okay, Doctor. okay. Um, are you changing your number? Same number? It's going to be twenty four this year. Oh, oh, I like I like and, that. And on out. And yeah, that's a yeah. good number. That's, Got the Kobe chain. Oh shoot! I like it. Oh okay, I'm Something loving like it. it. I'm loving it. That was that was kind of 
Uh, you know, I watched the the whole game over again. Where were where were you during that sixty point game? I was at home. Really? Like, look, I was cheering just as hard as everybody was in the stands that night. Honestly. <laughs> well, I was on the bus going in and out of service. <laughs> I think uh, I was yeah. in in Columbus, maybe. I don't know where I was, but I was on the bus. Like, hey, y'all, you know, and no one believed me. I watched the whole thing. Everybody else was knocked out on the bus. I came out after the bus. Oh no, I was in Akron. I was in Akron. And I was like, hey, y'all, Kobe score 60 because people started watching it. You know, he airballed his first couple shots and people were like, oh, yeah. no. <laughs> but he obviously came back in big fashion. I, and I enjoyed watching that game again. Um, but that's just a special moment. Was that was he one of your favorite athletes coming up, growing up? Definitely, definitely. I mean, just growing up, not being, I guess, I'm a huge baseball fan. But outside of that, I really just looked up to athletes outside of that. And I guess Mamba mentality is something that I try to take to, to my baseball game as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, uh, we could tell by your face. <laughs> on the mound you know i know you as this you know smiling you know cracking jokes having fun you know but obviously there, there's not many people that get on the mound and crack jokes and smile but <laughs> yeah but i mean it's 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 a business out there and i'm out there trying to make my money i'm out there trying to make my bread and that's what i want to do for a living so i gotta go out there and i gotta perform i like it i like it so i gotta ask you in the what's going on i don't know if you're allowed to comment or not <laughs> What's going on with this Indian's name change? I, I'm I'm kind of left in the dark. I ain't been looking really much at it. I was about to say, me and you are in the same boat. I'm still <laughs> in the dark about it. All I know is we got Indians for this next whole year, and then after that, it's kind of up in the air. I think that's more front office stuff and kind of just outside of my wheelhouse. Got you. I got you. I, I was asked if I still had, because they allowed me to keep all my jerseys, and people were like, do you still got the, the Chief Waho in your jersey? And I was like, I don't think so. And then I went back and I looked. I was like, I do. I was like, okay, that's what's up. <laughs> that's what's up. Yes. What what number were you last year? 26. 26. Okay. Hey, they gave you a nice number. I was 66. They just threw me like one I, of them old spring training jerseys. <laughs> I, be, I mean, I, I had a little heads up, too. They were like, oh, we got this available, this available. And I was like, you got anything in the 20s? I like I like begged and pleaded. You got anything in the 20s? Like, ah, well, we might have one thing. So, that's what's up that's what's up yeah i was gonna rock with 66 for a while i forget does does cam have that now did cam hill have that Cam had 20 oh cam's in the 20, 20s as well 27 wow well good for him look, look at y'all yeah, young. yeah it's a new age over here <laughs> well hey uh focusing on you know baseball with the state of our country has that been Hard for you? I know you're seeing because you like basketball and you follow the uh, NBA as much as I do, and seeing what Kyrie is going through, and you know, has has that been weird trying to you know focus on your craft and work, or just it's just status quo for you? I mean, from from a baseball aspect, I think it's very status quo because I feel like sports is a way to to kind of unite people and kind of have a lot of people forget about that. But at the same time, I think that we're now in a in a place in the country where athletes are using their voice to spe- step up and kind of speak about issues like that so as much as it allows people to diffuse the situation and kind of get away from it and have it being polarizing you also have people that are stepping up and voicing their opinions and i feel like it allows for a, a well-rounded kind of outlook on everything okay i agree with that i like that um now i know for me when i was getting ready for 2017 that was going to be my my you know my coming out year and i was ready to take on the role now for you coming into 2021 I mean, you've already established yourself the way you came out and pitched when they needed you last year. So I feel like me coming into 2017 was like, hey, I got to make my mark this year. I feel like you coming in, it, it might be a little bit different mindset for you. Uh, but just to share share what your mindset is for this upcoming season. Uh, honestly, it's to, to go out and learn as much as possible. I feel like the game now, at least for me, going from 2018 in Akron to, to 2020 in the big leagues is – the game's going to be a lot quicker, and I feel like me going out there is mainly just trying to be myself and take take the blows as they come because I feel like the game's going to be a lot faster, and I'm going to need to, to kind of adjust to that. Yeah, and I mean, that's something you said right there. That's pretty big is be yourself. A lot of people, especially me, that's where, you know, kind of mess with me. I had my routine. I had everything I was doing. Then I get up there, and I start seeing Andrew Miller, you know, Cody Allen doing this stuff. I'm like, all right, I, I got to do this then, you know, and then I kind of got out of whack and – you know, it wasn't the best option for me at the time, but you know yeah. that that's very, very key, I believe, especially for someone young like you. You know, what are you, twenty three? Twenty three, turning twenty four this year, Kobe year. Oh my goodness, this dude is young. 
That's what's up, though. That's what's up. I, I'm very excited for you and your career, man. It's 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 gonna be you're gonna be someone that's gonna keep me, you know, maybe buying cable so I can watch the Indians, <laughs> or I might just do the MOB TV. You know that that makes things easier. I used to do that for Jose Fernandez. I didn't watch anyone in 2014. He was the only. I would literally get on my PlayStation, the MOB TV app, and just go to those Marlin games when he started and just watch when it, him pitching. That's all I watched and. He would get me excited. Yeah, man. I miss, uh, you know, rest in peace. I also saw that on Twitter, they were, you know, doing a lot of, um, like, memorial stuff. I think it was Pitching Ninja of uh, Ventura, man. And I was just like, man, this dude out here. I think they showed him doing a warm-up pitch at 94. He was just chilling. <laughs> uh, yeah. That got hit by the back, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, how, how many times have you been on Pitching Ninja? Have you been there yet? Once. Once? Once? Nice. Something like that? I don't know. The first time I got put on, I definitely quote cool tweeted and I said, Mama, I made it. <laughs> I know. I was so geek when I got on there. I was like, oh, I'm on Twitch and Ninja. But exactly. that's what's <laughs> up. That's what's up. So uh, have you ever thought about doing anything like what Trevor Bauer's doing uh, and marketing himself? I, that might be someone you, something you do a little later once you establish your brand, I guess. Um, but have you thought about, you know, doing a little production and stuff like that, share behind the scenes and stuff like that? You seem like the personality that would – you know, that, that people will gravitate towards? Uh, I mean, I've, I've definitely thought about it, but I, I feel like right now is more me trying to be focused on, on what I know works for me in terms of baseball. Yeah. And I feel like, just like you said, once I kind of have my platform set, I feel like I can start to dive into other uh, endeavors. True. Uh, I mean, I'm doing some little stuff like I've streamed a couple times on Twitch. Okay. I'm, I've been doing some some little stuff, but I'm I'm still getting into it. I got my mic. I got my PS5. I got some stuff set up. But nice. We're still well, if you you know if you ever need help, you know I'm the. I know you're the man to go. And, and I've seen you've been doing Instagram lives here and there. Do you just, do you do that to answer questions? Do you Q and A's on there, or are you just you know just hanging out with some of your fans? Uh, honestly, I go on Instagram live when I don't really have anything to do because it's not necessarily anything I, I see myself doing on a regular basis. But gotcha. I definitely see how the fans enjoy it, so I enjoy going on there and just kind of talking up with them and seeing what the, see what's on their mind, talking to them a little bit. I feel that's like it's a good way for them to interact and for me to interact with them. Yeah, that's good, especially with, you know, I think the first time I saw you do it, you know, was when we were in the heat of COVID and you couldn't do anything. So, and I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how it's been for you in Florida, but in Ohio it's been, we, we were total shut down for a couple months earlier last year. So, but um, now, like we already talked about this, you know, kind of discovering yourself as a pitcher, you know, person and establishing a brand and platform. But just, you know, dive a little deeper into that. Do you you feel like um, obviously you're young and, you know, you want to you want to make a name for yourself by what you do on the field. But like, is there something you feel like as a pitcher, you're kind of like, you know what, you know, I kind of really need to, you know, better, better myself in this area. Or is there something like or as a person, it, it, it didn't even have to be bad, uh, baseball. Is there something that you're working on yourself um, outside because, you know, you want to learn a lot for this next summer season, but. You obviously you've got a good fastball. You've got you know some good off speed. You know I've never really got to see. I just because we you know I think we played catch maybe once or twice or something like that. But I've never really seen you pitch that much except in the um, once you got called up. And I was like, dang, when I saw that that snapper come out of there, I said, wow. <laughs> but I yeah. mean, is there anything that you're focusing on out, like specifically towards pitching this year? I mean, I think the the slider was new for me. This is the first time I've like consistently thrown it in games, and it worked really well actually. But I'd just say more more along the lines of me just developing and trying to be a big league pitcher consistently. Gotcha. Uh, I learned trying to pick the brains of guys like Clevenger before he got traded, picking picking Cookie's brain, talking to Bieber, talking to those guys and trying to figure out, like, what do they do that makes them so good and what what allows them to kind of go out there every day and just day in, day out and be consistent. Uh, and that's kind of just what I strive for when I'm on the mound, at least from a, from a starter standpoint. Every time I go out there, I want to have kind of all four of my pitches working. I feel like it's just it's always going to be a kind of like a never ending process of me trying to better myself. Yeah, I mean I agree. That's it's always I've been watching. I don't know if you tune into I am athlete the the like the yeah, podcast. Right That's so good. I've been watching that with Brandon Marshall, Ocho Cinco. They yeah. got uh, someone I never wasn't familiar with while he was playing, but the Channing Crowder and, yeah, they, um, uh, and Fred Taylor. They just had DK Metcalf on there. Uh, Justin oh. Jefferson. Oh, okay. Yeah. I pay attention. They got, they got, they have, they have some good athletes, high level athletes come on there, and they they really delve and dive into some deep stuff. They do, they do. I enjoy it. Like, 
So did you see the episode where they had um, the guy that was the kicker and he chose YouTube over over? Uh, I did watch that episode. It was it was like within their last couple of episodes, right? Yeah, yeah. That's that's a good one as well because it's talking about what we just finished talking about and it's building your brand and stuff like that. It's you definitely should tune into that, and I probably will leave a link to you know uh, like your your Twitch and just that uh, that YouTube the um, the podcast. I am athlete podcast because it's. It's very good for young athletes to see, and and there's some laughs in there too. I was cracking up, yeah. you know. I listened oh, to it in the car, oh, and I was, you know, I was into my stomach laughing <laughs> when that To was on there. <laughs> but um, I guess you know we've covered you know the marketing yourself and discovering yourself. So I kind of want to get into something that I think you probably, as an athlete, you probably ask yourself all the time, and that's you know, what do you think you need to improve on, in your opinion? with where you're currently at in your, you know, in your, your pitch mechanics, or if it's, you know, obviously you got four pitch mix, so I don't think you need to add a pitch. Um, but just where do you think you're at and, and where, and where you need to improve? Just, I feel like kind of, like I said, with that, with that never ending cycle of me just trying to get better, I feel like it's more just honing in on, on learning the league. There's little things that the vets do that I kind of pay attention to, mm-hmm. like listening to Roberto Perez, how he, how he understands lineups kind of top to bottom, kind of getting to that point where I can, know what to throw without even being on being like paying attention to what he's putting down. Like we're on the same page yeah. getting maybe just working on my change up, working on my curveball to the point where I can use it in any situation against any hitter kind of just make it that more lethal of having a four pitch mix. Well, what I've learned in my brief time up there is do not throw a two wheel breaking ball to Mike Trout. <laughs> 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 and, um, just the, the one thing I thought was funny is my first pitching meeting. You know, I'm looking, they're, we're going through the Tigers lineup, and they're saying all this stuff that we've never said in the minor leagues. <laughs> and I'm just like, then I go to Mickey See? after that meeting, and I'm like, Mickey, like, how am I supposed to remember all that? And he's like, oh, no, you just go out there and throw hard. <laughs> See, like, <laughs> they, they, they got away from that with me. They are like, look, we don't want you to stress about anything. Literally just go out there and be you. So I feel like that's been kind of like what I've honed in on. I think that's that's the best approach. And, you know, I admire that for the Indians, man. I. I mean, how much do you love the Indians organization? I know you haven't been around like I was and seen a couple, but I, I know I loved them, man. It, you know, they kind of, especially with Tito, you know, he's a, a player's manager. He cares about Tito. his players. I just felt like I was cared for, and they, they really wanted to do what was best for me. I mean, do you feel the same way? I'm, I mean, I, you say I haven't been here for long, but it's been seven years now. Almost. Oh, my. Yeah, that is yeah. true. That is true. <laughs> uh, but, I mean – I, I definitely feel like everybody has your best interest. You talk to the trainers, you talk to the strength coaches, you talk to the pitching coaches, even like your fellow teammates. Nobody's trying to beat you down. Everybody's trying to figure out the next best way to make themselves better as well as making you better. And I feel like that's just a, a culture thing. Tito, I feel like Tito's at the heart of that. And Antonetti's yeah. at the heart of that too. Is everybody still playing, you know, cards and, and I forget the other game they play in his office. <laughs> Were they still doing that last uh, year? Uh, he, tried, he, he tried to take some money from me. Uh, <laughs> He, he said, "He said, you know how to play cribbage." And I said, uh, oh, "No." Cribbage, yes, he, said, he said, "Bring your wallet. I'll teach you." <laughs> <laughs> Tito, man, you gotta love Tito. Um, so uh, I'm like, I'm trying to, you know, give people, you know, the the taste of the clubhouse. And you talked about the people that you watch. Even Bieber's pretty young, but we know we've seen obviously what he can do. Yeah, the, the people that you have, starting pitchers, even hitters. Just the players and the culture that Tito has set, it's just a good group of guys. Because the question I always got was, you know, who, you know, who's who's the the bad guy on the team, or who's who's something you didn't like? And I'm, I they don't believe me when I'm like, look, there was literally no one. You know, they even bring up Bauer. I'm like, look, he's my locker mate, and I love Bauer. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was like, he was cool. So like, I mean, I'm pretty sure you feel the same way. There's not, I have a hard time picking like the best one because everybody there's different personalities yeah. in there. I mean, um, I guess more specifically, how'd you feel, you know, knowing that you're losing a teammate like Lindor? But I feel like even when you get a a so-called superstar teammate like Lindor, you never get that feeling from him. You never get that vibe from him. He's he's really down to earth. You talk to talk to Jose Ramirez and it's, oh, he's going out there. He's having an MVP season and he's still same old Jose. You talk to Bieber who won the Cy Young and he's very low key, very Southern California, like relaxed, like, you know not all the guys which is which is very nice especially to a young guy like me kind of coming in and feeling a little bit uncomfortable those guys really make you 
like settle down and, and kind of fall into a rhythm, which is nice. Yeah, that that was my favorite thing, man. It was like a family. I was surprised when I would be doing my conditioning and we all would like give each other fives. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, what is this? <laughs> I thought you'd get to the big leagues, you'd be in your own, you'd have you doing your own thing in the corner. But it was not like that with Cleveland, man. And it it is it's very comforting and it makes you, you know, kind of come out of your shell and feel comfortable around those guys, which makes you perform better. So Yeah. Now, something I have gotten involved in is getting involved with my community. Um, obviously I have a smaller community, I'm assuming than yours, <laughs> cause I'm a small little, little town of Dover, um, is a little different. Um, but talk about a little bit about where you grew up. Um, is it, what, would you grow up in West Palm beach or? Yep. Yep. Down here in West Palm beach. I actually recently had talking about giving back. Uh, I recently had my kids camp this past Saturday, Nice. Uh, right next to my old high school at the, at the rec fields that I grew up at. Uh, and just kind of like, I guess from, from a giving back standpoint, just trying to provide a role model or trying to provide that kind of inspiration or someone that kids can kind of see, look at and be like, Oh, he came from the same place that I came from. And he went to the same high school that I might go to. And he's actually, he's on TV and I see him on TV and he's doing all this stuff. But I'm um, at the end of the day, it's all about giving back to those that could be the next, the next, the next generation that the future. Yeah, that's, that's very important. that was like exactly the embodiment of what my plans were when I came back to the area. You know, I, I had my, uh, I was in a like, a baseball facility and I was giving lessons to these young kids and a lot of the stuff, yes, I was teaching them baseball stuff, but a lot of the stuff they could just take on in any career, you know? So I was trying to instill what people instilled in me. So this, I don't know if you've heard the story, but two athletes that are huge superstars, Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq Uh or Emmett Smith, these guys, they had a plan when they got into the league. I don't know who their representation was, or who put this on them and said they should do this. But I think it's genius. I learned about this when I came into uh, professional baseball. So they used to carry around flashcards. And they would okay. make sure in their interviews that they would mention, they would write down these words that they want to be remembered for. And they would present them in an interview. And they would make sure Emmett Smith would always talk about durability. This dude was never hurt <laughs> and played like every game. You know, and, and, you know, Shaq was always a little bit more lighthearted and, you know, he always wanted to have a, you know, a good time and he'd have all these nicknames and stuff. So his was a little different. But if you could pick three, you know, words that you want to be remembered for, not necessarily that you feel like you are now, uh, but just three things that you'd want to remember for. Uh, one would be dependable, just kind of on the baseball field uh, from, a, from a teammate standpoint. Guys can, can look at me and be like, that's what I want on the mound. That's why that's what I want. Uh, kind of behind me or pitching for me and in, in the tight spots in the game and then off the field just in terms of like giving back like just a, de- a dependable guy where you can look to me for whatever you need uh, and then humble at the same time uh, I feel like that's a huge part to, to any athlete you can never let the game be bigger than yourself you can never think that you're bigger than the game or bigger than what's around you because the game of baseball can humble you very fast yes it can <laughs> very 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 fast <laughs> Uh, and then I'd say the third one would probably just be, I'd have a good attitude about everything. Uh, I just a joyous guy. I'm real happy. Like, you, you know, yeah, I, agree. Around me. I agree with that. <laughs> I'm uh, like to joke around, but at the same time, business is business. But I like to, to kind of like lighten the mood. And I feel like I try and bring that to, to all aspects of my life, whether it be baseball. Uh, if you see me dancing on the mound, sing along or whatever song it is, I, I try to, I try to bring that joy to the game. And kind of just, I, I want to expound on that. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of that hardball moment. <laughs> oh, trust me. Trust me. If, if anybody looks at my Twitter, looks at my photo tweet. Yep. Or my- that's why I brought that up. That's why I brought that up. All right. Um, before we get to the, the fast, well, actually, bef- we'll ask uh, uh, the Facebook questions before we do the fast questions. But just quickly, this could be anything. It doesn't have to be numeric goals or anything like that, but just – in your career, um, you know what? What are some goals you want to accomplish? Uh, I mean, you're talk if you're if you're talking to me now, they're the same as when I was seven years old. But it's like All Star Game, win a Cy Young, win a World Series. Nice. Uh, and honestly, just have fun playing the game of baseball. I already checked one off the list, which was making the big leagues. So now I got to stay there. <laughs> yes, and and don't make the mistake I did. You know, once I got to the big leagues, I never really set another goal. I was just like. I'm in the big leagues. <laughs> and then quickly. Yeah, I like that all the time. I start getting starry eyed. I, I, I How bright at, I are those lights? Honestly, 
it wasn't even the lights. It was more like the guys across the field. I saw like Yadier Molina across the field. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> my- I used to play too in MVP 05. <laughs> Well, my moment was uh, Miguel Cabrera. I did a good job. My focus was to block out names and just pitch. Uh-huh. Um, and luckily, I was able to pitch with Roberto Perez in Columbus, so I was kind of comfortable with him. For okay. some reason, um, uh, dang, was, huh? No, 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 I was saying. I was, was going to say, I can't, this is so disrespectful. Silver Slugger, the catcher for the Indians before Roberto. I'm so terrible. I'm not, I wasn't an Indian fan before. You can't, you can't. Ah! But he he wanted no part of me catching, <laughs> and Roberto Roberto was kind of scared too. Like when, especially when people were on second and third, he was like, "Oh crap, here we go, Percy with this sinker." But <laughs> but um, but it was it was it was nice to be you know in that situation and be comfortable with those guys. But Jan um, Gomes, Jan Gomes, there it is, there it is. Damn, I feel so terrible, Jan. You're a beast, man. Don't <laughs> if you do lay eyes on this video. <laughs> I swear, I swear. And I hung out with his brother. His, his brother Juan was cool too. Yeah. But um but yeah, it I mean, wherever I was going with that. <laughs> we'll just go into the Facebook questions. So there's not there's not, there's only two I want to ask. And I guess one is um you know, this off season, what did you do to build endurance? Um and this person, so it's Gus Lambros wanted me to let you know that, you know, Tribe Nation, you know, is 100% behind you. They love you. and uh, But they want to know, you know, what you did this offseason to build endurance. You know, there's a lot of kids in the area that love baseball, and even though we're not in the great weather in Florida like you. But <laughs> they just want to know what you did to build endurance. Uh, I mean, I have I, – I feel like a lot of that is tailored into my workouts. Uh, I'm in the gym four days a week, and then I have, like, these two more conditioning-type days. But a lot of those days are, are mainly running, sprinting and – kind of just getting my body moving to, to kind of prepare for what season entails in terms of a lot of season is high intensity. Even, even pitching as much as I feel like I'm standing in one spot, it's very high intensity. So mm-hmm. a, lot of, a lot of my training reflects that. Yeah. I like to share, like, it's not like a quarterback, you know, a quarterback sometimes very seldom as a quarterback, do you just let one go as hard as you can? But yeah. pitching is a very high intensity, aggressive move every 13 seconds. <laughs> so you got to <laughs> oh. be, you got to be unless, good. Unless you go up like a double or something. Yeah. Then you, then you, uh, but then you got to, you know, if someone else is on base, then you got to sprint behind the catcher. I hate it backing up. <laughs> but uh, the the other one is from uh, Dennis Shoop. I hope I'm saying this right. But he wants to know if there will be any signings in Cleveland or uh, in person or uh, either by mail. I know I, I know. I still, believe it or not, I still get mail asking for my signature. I'm like, you sure you want mine? But. <laughs> uh, with with the COVID protocols, I don't know if there's going to be any any in person or like physical stuff like that, but definitely by mail. If you send it to the stadium, I'll try and get to it. Gotcha. Um, is there is there going to be a tribe fest or no? We don't know yet. Okay, okay, know. okay. I'm asking you these questions. I should be asking the other people. <laughs> you gotta you gotta ask front office or guys with more time. <laughs> I'm still I'm still the new kid on the block. Well, I, one thing, one story I want to share before we get to these fast questions is. You know, the biggest thing when I when I got called up that was I got asked a question that I probably wasn't, let's say, experienced enough to answer. And I got cut off by Coco and Rajay. They were like, no, you're not answering this question. <laughs> we will answer for you. And it had to deal with, you know, Adam Jones. And he was talking about, you know, just the, the lack of and I'm not quoting him directly. So it's more my, my paraphrase for what I remember from five years ago is, you know, the lack of black people playing baseball and and just I guess obviously Adam Jones is all star, big league, professional dude, you know, known for the especially the catch, you know, in the uh, the World Baseball Classic. Yeah. Um and I got to be around him a little bit, but uh when I went to the Orioles, but <clears throat> this dude, I mean, he did talk about, you know, an issue and I don't know if it's if you want to call it issue because we do have a lot of, you know, other players from the Dominican, Venezuelan, and stuff like that. But I mean, in your opinion, do you do you feel like that's something that you know needs to be addressed? Do you feel like there there's some people that need to be exposed to baseball more? Uh, because I did make a couple appearances for the Indians on their behalf in the in, this, in the inner city in Cleveland, and just getting you know kids 
around, you know, me, a black player, playing and just playing baseball with them and letting them know, like, hey, you know, you could have a future in this. I mean, is you even think that's an issue, or is that something you haven't really paid attention to? Or, uh, I mean, for for me personally, I feel like just growing up, representation matters. Period. Uh, and then it's just growing up, like the guys that I look up to, at least from a baseball standpoint, were a lot of mainly black guys. Right? I tried yeah. to, to emulate people that look like me. I yeah, tried yeah. to. Doc Gooden videos. I looked at Derek Jeter. Like I watched guys that, that kind of I tried to emulate them. And I feel like representation, at least when it comes to me, I try and provide that that role model as type of type of vibe, I guess. Nice. Nice. So which is mean? why I was gonna say, which is why I do my camp. I try and put my face out there as I'm a black kid. Uh, I grew up playing baseball. Like it's not a foreign, a foreign subject to to all these kids. Like you guys could have a future just like I have a present right now. Nice. Nice. All right, <clears throat> so this is something we used to do at my my last job, Comdoc, where a new employee would get put on the hot seat around the whole company, and you would have to answer these questions. Now I'm not going to go all of them. We're just going to do nine questions, and we're going to give you a time. We're gonna, we're going to start with thirty seconds. I'm not going to time it too crazy for you. I'll give you some leeway, but thirty thirty, 30 seconds. Thirty time. seconds. Thirty seconds. So what I'm going to do is we're going to click this Apple Watch, and we're going to have you on a thirty second timer. All right. <clears throat> Family Feud, Steve Harvey. All right. <laughs> They're pretty easy. Favorite food? Okay. Steak. Ooh. Favorite oh. movie? Toy Story. Oh, okay. Most influential person? My father. Like it. Best advice you've ever get were ever given? Uh, if you do what you love and you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Mm. Favorite car? Gosh, uh, I drive a BMW. I love BMWs. I probably go with like an M5. Oh, nice okay. M5. I like that. I like that. Favorite athlete? <clears throat> right now, right LeBron. Now. LeBron. Easy. Okay. Live or dead? Who would you want to meet? Ooh. <laughs> Dang. And we're way past 30 seconds, but I want to hear these answers. <laughs> <laughs> You're the guinea pig. This is the first one we go through. Dang. Uh, honestly, Barack Obama. Ooh, I like it. All right. Uh, favorite vacation spot? The Bahamas. Mm. Isaacs. <laughs> Isaacs. Oh, man. Um, the, the, we, the originator of Dr. Six. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shoot. Uh, Todd Isaacs is a speed demon for those who don't know. For those who don't know, <laughs> speed demon. All right, actually, we're gonna do an extra one just because I'm really curious. Favorite superhero ability? Superhero ability? Yeah. If I had to pick one for myself, yes. or who? Yeah. If I could control time, that would be the best superpower ever. I like that. I like that. Like Doctor Strange. Got you. Okay, you got to get the. I need. I need my. I need my. Uh, <laughs> My stone of time. <laughs> the time stone. All right, man. Tristan, bro, I appreciate you coming through. Uh, this has been fun for me, man. I don't know about you, but this has been fun, especially adding in this fast segment. I'm very, you know, curious to see what the, the feedback is, but I'm glad you came through. Hope you had fun. Um, wasn't too bad for you, I right? Did. No, no. I, I definitely enjoy talking to you first. That's what's up. I'm That's what's up. We might have to get up on the games uh, one of these days. But um, Hey, you know where to find me. Yes, yeah, true. Well, <laughs> congratulations on your PS5. Congratulations. <laughs> and I'm very excited to see you, uh, you know, perform this this year. And just let everybody know, this dude, you know, I believe in this dude. He's got a good future. He's a good dude. He reminds me a lot of myself. So you guys should pay attention to this guy. And, uh, you know, hopefully you have a great season. And, you know, hopefully, you know, you have something similar to the 2016 season. <laughs> Ah, see, you know you're talking about. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, man. Uh, we appreciate everybody. Make sure you subscribe. We'll be live again Tuesday. Well, not live. I'm, we ain't doing that yet. We ain't doing live. We'll go live one of these days. <laughs> but uh, no, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, and uh, we'll be back again. Peace. Save me, cause it's too costly. It feels like I'm so lonely. Shouting.